learning objectives. At the end of this topic, you will be able to explain air pollution, discuss the sources of air pollutants, examine the harmful effects of air pollutants, develop an understanding of greenhouse effect and global warming, predict the meaning of water pollution, enlist the factors responsible for water pollution. I have heard the news that Taj Mahal in Agra is now one of the seven wonders of the world. But they were disappointed to hear that the beauty of this monument in white marble is being threatened by air pollution in the area surrounding the Taj. Right. We are all aware that our environment is not what it used to be. Our elders talk about the blue sky, clean water and fresh air that was available in their times. Now the media regularly reports on the falling quality of the environment. We ourselves feel the impact of the falling quality of air and water in our lives. The number of people suffering from diseases of the respiratory system, for example, is steadily rising. Let me tell you more about this in this chapter. We can survive for some time without food, but we cannot survive even for a few minutes without air. The simple fact tells us how important clean air is to us. We know that air consists of a mixture of gases. By volume, about 78% of this mixture is nitrogen and about 21% is oxygen. Carbon dioxide, argon, methane, ozone and water vapor are also present in very small quantities. When air is contaminated by unwanted substances, which have a harmful effect on both the living and the non-living, it's referred to as air pollution. The substances which contaminate the air are called air pollutants. Sometimes such substances may come from natural sources like smoke and dust arising from forest fires or volcanic eruptions. Pollutants are also added to the atmosphere by certain human activities. The sources of air pollutants are factories, power plants, automobile exhausts and burning of firewood and dung cakes. Many respiratory problems are caused by air pollution. Vehicles produce high levels of pollutants like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides and smoke. Carbon monoxide is produced from incomplete burning of fuels such as petrol and diesel. It's a poisonous gas. It reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Fog like layer in the atmosphere is present during winters. This is smog, which is made up of smoke and fog. Smoke may contain oxides of nitrogen which combine with other air pollutants and fog to form smog. The smog causes breathing difficulties such as asthma, cough and wheezing in children. Many industries are also responsible for causing air pollution. Petroleum refineries are a major source of gaseous pollutants like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is produced by combustion of fuels like coal in power plants. It can cause respiratory problems including permanent lung damage. Other kinds of pollutants are chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, which are used in refrigerators, air conditioners and aerosol sprays. CFCs damage the ozone layer of the atmosphere. In addition to the above mentioned gases, automobiles which burn diesel and petrol also produce tiny particles which remain suspended in air for long periods. They reduce visibility. When inhaled, they cause diseases. Such particles are also produced during industrial processes like steel making and mining. Power plants give out tiny ash particles which also pollute the atmosphere. Over the past two decades, India's most famous tourist attraction, Taj Mahal, located in Agra, has become a matter of concern. Experts have warned that pollutants in the air are discoloring its white marble. So it is not only living organisms that get affected by polluted air, but non-living things like buildings, monuments and statues also get affected. The industries located in and around Accra like rubber processing, automobile, chemicals and especially the Mathura oil refinery have been responsible for producing pollutants like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. 
These gases react with water vapor present in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid and nitric acid. The acids drop down with rain making the rain acidic. This is called the acid rain. Acid rain corrodes the marble of the monument. The phenomenon is also called marble cancer. Suspended particulate matter such as the soot particles emitted by the Mathura oil refinery have contributed towards the yellowing of the marble. The Supreme Court has taken several steps to save the Taj. It has ordered industries to switch to cleaner fuels like CNG, compressed natural gas and LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. Moreover, the automobile should switch over to unleaded petrol in the Taj zone. We know that sun's rays warm the Earth's surface. A part of the radiation that falls on the Earth is absorbed by it and a part is reflected back into space. A part of the reflected radiation is trapped by the atmosphere. The trapped radiations further warm the Earth. The trapped heat warms the greenhouse. The trapping of radiations by the Earth is atmosphere. The trapping of radiations by the Earth's atmosphere is similar. That's why it's called the greenhouse effect. Without this process, life would not have been possible on Earth. But now it threatens life. CO2 is one of the gases responsible for this effect. We know that CO2 is one of the components of air. But if there is excess of CO2 in the air, it acts as a pollutant. On the other hand, CO2 is continuously being released because of human activities. On the other hand, area under forests are decreasing. Plants utilize CO2 from the atmosphere for photosynthesis, thereby decreasing the amount of CO2 in the air. Deforestation leads to an increase in the amount of CO2 in the air because the number of trees which consume CO2 is reduced. Human activities thus contribute to the accumulation of CO2 in the atmosphere. CO2 traps the heat and does not allow it to escape into space. As a result, the average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere is gradually increasing. This is called global warming. Other gases like methane, nitrous oxide and water vapor also contribute towards this effect. Like CO2, they are also called greenhouse gases. Global warming has become a major concern for governments worldwide. Many countries have reached an agreement to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. The Kyoto Protocol is one such agreement. There are many success stories in our fight against air pollution. For example, a few years ago, Delhi was one of the most polluted cities in the world. It was being choked by fumes released from automobiles running on diesel and petrol. A decision was taken to switch to fuels like CNG and unleaded petrol. These measures have resulted in a cleaner air for the city. The quality of air at various locations is monitored regularly by the government and other agencies. We can use this data to generate awareness about air pollution among friends and neighbors. There is a need to switch over to alternative fuels instead of the fossil fuels for our energy requirements. These could be solar energy, hydropower and wind energy. Small contributions on our part can make a huge difference in the state of the environment. We can plant trees and nurture the ones already present in the neighborhood. We saw that water is becoming scarce due to the increase in population, industries and agricultural activities. Whenever harmful substances such as sewage, toxic chemicals, silt etc. get mixed with water, the water becomes polluted. The substances that pollute water are called water pollutants. Let's go through the case study of Ganga to have better understanding. Ganga is one of the most famous rivers of India. It sustains most of the northern, central and eastern Indian population. 
millions of people depend on it for their daily needs and livelihood. However, recently a study by the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF, found that Ganga is one of the 10 most endangered rivers in the world. The pollution levels have been rising for many years. We have reached this stage because the towns and cities through which the river flows throw large quantities of garbage, untreated sewage, dead bodies, and many other harmful things directly into the river. An ambitious plan to save the river, called the Ganga Action Plan, was launched in 1985. It aimed to reduce the pollution levels in the river. However, the increasing population and industrialization have already damaged this mighty river beyond repair. Let us take a specific example to understand the situation. The Ganga at Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh, UP, has one of the most polluted stretches of the river. Kanpur is one of the most populated towns in UP. People can be seen bathing, washing clothes, and defecating in the river. They also throw garbage, flowers, idols of gods and goddesses, and non-biodegradable polythene bags into the river. At Kanpur, the amount of water is comparatively small, and the flow of river is very slow. In addition, Kanpur has more than 5,000 industries. These include fertilizer, detergent, leather, and paint industries. These industrial units discharge toxic chemical waste into the river. Many industries discharge harmful chemicals into the rivers and streams, causing the pollution of water. Examples are oil refineries, paper factories, textile and sugar mills, and chemical factories. These industries cause chemical contamination of water. Water which is suitable for drinking is called potable water. We have seen how various physical and chemical processes in the sewage treatment plants help to clean water before discharging it into water bodies. Similarly, municipal bodies treat the water before supplying it to households. Let us see how water can be made safe for drinking. We've already seen how water is filtered. This is a physical method of removing impurities. A popular household filter is a candle-type filter. Many households use boiling as a method for obtaining safe drinking water. Boiling kills the germs present in the water. Chlorination is a commonly used chemical method for purifying water. It is done by adding chlorine tablets or bleaching powder to the water. We must be cautious. We should not use more chlorine tablets than specified. Laws for industrial units should be strictly implemented so that polluted water is not disposed of directly into rivers and lakes. Water treatment plants should be installed in all industrial areas. Water treatment plants should be installed in all industrial areas. At our individual levels, we should consciously save water and not waste it. Creative ideas like reusing water can be used for washing and for other household tasks. For example, water used for washing vegetables may be used to water plants in the garden. Pollution is no longer a distant phenomenon. It is affecting the quality of our daily lives. Unless we realize our responsibility and start using environment-friendly processes, the very survival of our planet is in danger. Summary Let's summarize the topic. We cannot stay alive even for a few minutes without air. Many industries are also accountable for causing air pollution. Automobiles burn diesel and petrol, generate tiny particles which remain floating in air for a long period. There is a need to switch over to alternative fuels instead of fossil fuels.